In this video, we're going to be going over what intercepts are on a graph and how we can solve some problems uh, using the equation y equals mx plus b, which is known as the slope-intercept form of an equation. All right, so getting started, visually, to figure out what intercepts are is that they are the points where a graph line crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. So visually, that's pretty easy to spot. Uh, for, in this one, for example, this graph line is crossing the y-axis right here, and that has the coordinates of 0, 2. And then where is the x-intercept is where that line crosses the x-axis. So that's at that point there, which has coordinates negative 4 and 0. Now, the really important thing to notice here is that no matter what, x-intercepts will always have a y-value of 0, and all of the y-intercepts will always have an x-value of 0. So no matter where we have an x-intercept, it's always going to be along the x-axis, right? So that means our y-value would be 0. And anywhere we have a line that crosses the y-axis, like here or down here, you'll notice that all of these points have an x value of 0. I know a lot of students, they get that mixed up. Like on a test, they might think that x-intercepts have an x value of 0 because you think it's just x means x. But you, um, I find it really helps to think about it visually if you're on a test and you can't remember. Like literally draw a Cartesian plane. And if it's asking about, let's say, a y-intercept, just pretend where a y-intercept is. For example, that's an example of a y-intercept, and that would have an x value of zero. So if you ever forget, try, try to visualize it yourself, and that should help you remember. All right, now the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, when we're given an equation in this form, y equals mx plus b. So far we are, we've learned about the slope of a line, and we learned that the slope is represented by the letter m of the alphabet. So when we're given an equation like y equals, um, let's say, 5x plus 2, we know that because the coefficient is 5, that's also our slope. So our slope in that case for that equation would be 5. The next thing we're going to learn, though, is that the value of b here, b actually represents our y-intercept. That's what I'm going to write as y int. And m is our slope. That could be really handy to help us um, figure out the uh, the slope of a line and its y-intercept really quickly when you look at an, at an equation. Uh, this one, for example, we know has a slope of 5 and a y-intercept of positive 2. So you might get a question like um, this guy down here. Write a linear equation with a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 10. So since our slope is 2... That means our coefficient in front of x would be a positive 2. And then our y-intercept neg is negative 10. So that means instead of adding, we're going to be subtracting. So it'll be 2x minus 10. So our constant is negative 10. And that would be our answer. Now the next skill we're going to go over is how to find an x-intercept or a y-intercept if you're not visually looking at it on a graph. Like if you're just given an equation like, let's say, y equals 4x plus 12. Okay, so let's start with looking for the y-intercept. So to solve this algebraically, that means we're going to be using some algebra skills. But the important thing is we need to think, does that, if we're looking for the y-intercept, does that mean x equals 0 or y equals 0? So like I explained earlier, if you, if you forget, try to visualize it. Y-intercept means that there's an x value of 0. So in our equation of y equals 4x plus 12, what we're going to do is we're going to actually replace x with 0 because we know a y-intercept means that the x value is 0. So let's try it. So y is going to equal 4 times 0 plus 12. So all I've done is I've replaced x with 0, and now we solve it. So y is going to equal 4 times 0 plus 12. Well, I know 4 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 12 gets me 12. So to write our y-intercept properly as an ordered pair, 
we need our set of brackets, comma in the middle. Our x value, as we've been discussing, has it is zero, and our y value is 12. So that would be our answer. That would be the y-intercept of this equation if we were to graph it on a Cartesian plane. Now, next part, we're going to find the x-intercept. So this time, um, x-intercept means that uh, our y value is equal to zero. For example, if we drew an x-intercept here, that has a y value of zero. Okay, so back to the equation, we're going to rewrite it again, but instead of replacing an x with zero, we're going to replace y with zero. And this is what would happen. We would get zero equals 4x plus 12. So now we've got to think of this like an algebra equation we need to solve. So we start by, well, we're trying to get x by itself. So we subtract 12 from both sides of the equation first. Those 12s cancel out. And then we'd get, well, 0 minus 12 is negative 12. And on the right-hand side, all we'd have is, four, is 4x. Four Last step here to get x by itself is to divide both sides by 4. And then we would get our answer of x equals uh, negative 12 divided by 4. That's negative 3. Okay, last step is to write this as an ordered pair. We figured out our x value is negative 3. And we know because it's an x-intercept, we get a y value of 0. So that would be our final answer. Okay, so for the rest of this video, I'm going to be going over an example of a word problem where you can utilize these skills to help you solve real life problems. So uh, this question here, we've got a taxi service that charges a flag fare of $3.20 and then 80 cents per kilometer driven. First part is to write a linear equation to represent this scenario. Well, um, we're going to start off by writing y equals, that's how we always start. And I know x is going to represent my unknown value. So in this case, our unknown valuable value sorry, is how far the taxi is driving us, specifically the number of kilometers. And per means to multiply. So um, the flag fare is going to be $3.20. And then we're going to add 80 cents per kilometer that we drive. The tricky part here is that um, the flag fare is in dollar amounts. So we need to actually convert 80 cents into dollars just so we're dealing with the same unit of measurement. So 80 cents is 0 0.80 dollars. And we're going to multiply that by x. x again representing the number of kilometers that we're driving. So um, part b here is asking what's the slope? Well remember the slope is the coefficient. It's what we're multiplying, which number we're multiplying by x. So in this case, our slope is 0 0.80. Uh, part C is asking, what does the ordered pair 0, uh, comma 3.20 represent? So if we were to imagine graphing this, it might look something like this, where it starts at $3.20 and goes up by 80 cents per kilometer. So the ordered pair, 0, uh, comma 3.20, that represents our y-intercept. Oh, that was taking too long. I was going to write it out. Okay, so it represents the y-intercept and how much the initial cost is to hire the taxi. So we always have to think in the context of the, uh, the word problem, what does this point represent? So you always have to think very critically about what the question is talking about. Um, part D says to determine the cost to travel 10 kilometers. So here we can use the equation to help us. We know x represents the number of kilometers we're driving. So in this case, we're being told x is 10. So we're going to use our equation, y equals 3.20 plus 0 0.80 times x. But instead of writing x, I'm actually going to replace it with 10, because we know x equals 10, just like that. So to solve this, we're going to do 3.20 plus 0 0.80 times 10. I know that's equal to 8. Of course, we're following order of operations, bed mass rules. We multiply before we add here. So 
That's why I'm multiplying those together first. Now we're just going to add 3.20 plus 8 to get our answer. It's going to cost $11.20. All right, last question, then we'll be done this video. It is, how far could someone travel if they have $24? Well, using the equation again to help us, this time we're being told the cost, not the number of kilometers. So the cost is represented by our other variable, y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the equation, but instead of y, I'm going to write 24. So we're going to write 24 equals 3.20 plus 0.80x, and then now we've got an algebraic equation we can solve. If we can figure out what x is, that represents the number, the distance we can drive. So to get x by itself, first we're going to subtract $3.20 from both sides. That would get us 20.80 on the left, and 0.80x on the right. All right, and then our last step here would be to divide everything by 0 0.80, canceling that out. And we're gonna get our answer of 26. Uh, our units for this one, uh, the question was, how, is how far could someone travel if they have $24? So our answer would be, uh, they could travel 26 kilometers. All right, that would be it for this video. Hope that was helpful.